keep watching to check out all this cool stuff I got from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. Hello everyone, this is Audra with Magnolia Street Garden and today I'm super excited to unbox my order from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. I don't think I have ever spent so much money on seeds before and I actually <laughs> expected it to come in a little bit bigger of a package but I had to remember they're just seeds so they're pretty tiny. Anyway, um, my order came in this adorable brown paper bubble wrap mailer and um, it's the coolest part is actually not the front. The coolest part is the back. On the back, this is an actual order form for seeds. It says you can cut this out and mail it in. And you can order watermelon, onions, strawberry seeds, and then um, you fill out this little order form in the bottom corner. And you can actually mail this thing back in. So it kind of has dual purpose, which I think is kind of cool. So I'm going to cut this open and see what's inside. Here we go. There, folks, is $132 worth of seeds. <laughs> now, I'm gonna sort these into um, some piles so I can show you what's in here a little more easily, so I'll do that and get right back to you. So I've organized everything in piles, and I have to say, <laughs> I'm super excited, so seeds make me excited. And I'm happy to show you everything I got. I'm gonna do it in sections. So I'm gonna start out by showing you the things that I got for free. So because I made such a big order, I guess, they sent me four free things. And I got um, black vernissage tomatoes. They're like a little cherry tomato. I've grown these before, love them. Uh, dill. Bee Balm Lemon, which I'm super excited about this because I almost ordered it and I was like, no, I don't need one more. And then they got, they sent it to me free, so I'm super excited. And then I got also a Purple Russian Tomato, which is kind of cool. And I'm super excited about getting these free things. The next category I'm going to show you is all the beans and peas and things that grow on vines. So this first one is King Tut Purple Peas. They have, um, they're pretty early, that's why I picked them in, they're purple, which is cool. This is 1,500 year old cave bean. These are beans that you grow and dry and then you cook them from dry, which is something I've never done before and I'm excited to try that. This is um, Chinese python snake bean. This is a new cool thing. Baker Creek always has cool things. They say that you can harvest this when it's 12 to 15 inches and it'll be like a squash but then it's also kind of like a green bean, so I'm excited to try that. This is Coozer's Calico Travel Lima Bean, which I just think they're really pretty and kind of cool. And um, like I said, I wanted to try growing things that dry, so that one. And then the last one is these Chinese Light Green Long Beans. Um, I think some people call these asparagus beans. I actually grew these last year, so if you want to see the video I made about growing these, you can just click the link. Uh, about that. I love this green bean. It was super easy and super yummy tasting and grew like crazy. So anyway, that is the beans and things that grow in vines. The next category is peppers and um, all, none of these are terribly hot. In fact, not hardly hot at all. So this first one is Melrose pepper. It is not hot, but I thought it was pretty in red. This one is Mira Pepper, also not hot, but I really like the shape of these and the color of them. Next is Cubanelle Pepper. This kind of reminded me of Banana Pepper, but I think it's a little bit bigger than that, I think, so um, that's why I chose this one. Then of course Poblano, because they make good um, Chili Riano and stuff like that. <clears throat> then we have Yellow Monster Peppers, which these are supposed to be huge. Um, eight inches long and four inches wide, so I'm super excited to grow these. Then we have, this is probably my favorite, Nada Pino peppers. They're supposed to taste like a jalapeno, but not have the heat that a jalapeno does. And then last, I have this pretty Murasaki purple pepper. This is a pepper from Japan, and it is also not hot, but it's this gorgeous purple color. So that is all the peppers.
Okay, next we have things that grow underground, I guess is what I'm gonna call this category. First, we have ox heart carrots, which I love this one because it was kind of short and fat, which I think it'll be good for growing in more shallower areas and it won't need quite the depth of normal carrots. So that's why I chose this one. It's actually from France. Then we have my favorite radish of all time, the, Eng the French breakfast radish. And this one is easy to grow. It's not, I don't find it being hot. It has a real mild, but yet radishy flavor. And it's kind of long, long and skinnier when you grow it. So favorite radish ever. Definitely recommend this one. Next, we have the golden beet. My husband loves beets, and I think it's just fun to try something different beside the regular old red one. Last year, I grew zebra beets, which are those red and white striped ones, and they were over, they were real great. But I just want to try something a little bit different this year. So golden beets. And then last, this is a brand new thing for me, leeks. I've never grown leeks before, but I know they're great for cooking, and they add a lot of flavor when you cook different things. So leeks and... These are called, I can't really pronounce it, Carrington, Carrington maybe, Carrington Leeks. So that is the things that grow underground category. All right, next we have the, I'm calling these yummy greens. Um, actually, there's only two of these things that I have actually grown before, and that is this one, the Purple Lady Bok Choy. This is a lovely bok choy and the purple color I just think is really pretty and cool and I don't know I think the more colorful your food the more nutrients it gives you I don't really know if there's any truth to that but it makes me feel good then we have scarlet kale another thing that I've grown before I just like it I like the purple color it adds to the garden and we really like kale okay all the rest of these I have never grown or eaten before in my life so here we go first we have tatsoi greens it's just a leafy green. It's Chinese. Um, I've never eaten it. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to give that a try. This next one is something super weird. It's called, hold on, I got to look, Celtus. And it, it's supposed to be like, I think, kind of like a celery type thing. But it grows this long, skinny stalk and then has these leaves that come out of the top. It is a funny looking thing. So I thought, well, that'll be cool. So I'll give that a try. Then we have... Mizuna Benny Hushi, another edible green. I've never had it before in my life, but I'm excited to try it. It's from Japan. And last, we have this oyster leaf. This is actually a perennial, and that's why I chose it because I like perennial things that I don't have to plant over and over. And um, I, you're supposed to be able to use it in salads and stuff. And I hear this is from Scotland, so I'm excited to try this one. So that is the leafy green category. All right, so my next category, I got a little bit of trivia for you, a little education because I am a teacher. Um, this is squash and cucumbers, which I'm calling the cucurbitaceae category because squash and cucumbers come from the same family, the gourd family, who, which the, the gourd family's like official name is cucurbitaceae. I actually looked up how to pronounce it, and that's actually how you pronounce it. But anyway, there's a little trivia for you. So first I have um, Japanese long cucumbers. These are the ones like you see in the store. They're those really long, skinny cucumbers. I really like those a lot. I just like the flavor and I like how they're long and skinny. Next I have a new thing. This is West India Burr Gherkin cucumber. This is a small cucumber. Like I understand it's like thumb sized. It's small and it grows on big vines. So that's just something I wanted to try from India. Next, we have the Costata Romanesco squash, and this is an Italian ribbed zucchini, and I just thought it was cool because it's ribbed, and if you can see on the picture, the slices, I think they just have a really cool shape, so that's why I chose that one. Then we have spaghetti squash. It's just spaghetti squash. I've never grown it before, and I wanted to try to, and I like it, so. And then last, I'm excited about this one. This is zucchini. Zucchino rompicante squash. I think my my mother used to call this um, trombocino squash, and I don't know if it's the same thing because it looks incredibly similar to this. She grew some last year, and it grows these huge, long squash that kind of curl around like you see in the picture, and they are great for just eating it, um, frying it up, or even using it in like breads and things. It works really great, so I'm excited to grow this this year. 
Anyway, that is the cucubitaceae category from the gourd family. Okay, next category, tomatoes and eggplant. There is no trivia or reasoning behind that besides they're round and they come off of a bush. So anyway, here's tomatoes and eggplant. First, we have Aswald eggplant. This is a huge eggplant. Each eggplant can be up to three pounds and it's kind of, it's kind of like squat, like a teardrop shape and it's huge. So I thought that would be fun. Next we have, Ed sorry, these are hard to pronounce. Edirine, Edirine purple striped eggplant. I don't know if that's right. I probably just butchered, butchered that, but I think it's cool and it's pretty because it's kind of stripy and white and purple. So that looks fun to grow. Next we have tomatoes. I love this one. It's called Hungarian heart tomato. And I think they actually do look like little heart shaped tomatoes. Um, they're supposed to be really meaty. And then this one, love copia tomato. This is beautiful. Look at that red and gold striping on there. Super pretty. I think it'll be fun. This one is cool. This is called an atomic grape tomato. And I think they definitely look kind of spacey, those bright, vivid colors. And they're a grape tomato, so they'll be small. So I'm like, that's new too, I've never grown that. This one is the black icicle tomato. It's a really, really dark red tomato and they come out kind of long and skinny. I guess that's why they're called an icicle. This is new for me too. This one is the giant green tomato. Now last year I grew green tomatoes and they're actually, when they're ripe, they are green, this color. And they, even though they're green, they taste like a ripe red tomato, which I think is really cool. And I grew some last year, not this variety. These are supposed to be giant. So I thought that would be fun, but I really thought it was cool to eat a green tomato ripe that tasted ripe, but looked like it wasn't. And then last, we have Dad's Sunset Tomato. I grew these last year, loved them, so I wanted to get them again. They're just really pretty, and I think they make great tomato sandwiches. So that is the tomato and eggplant category. Okay, so this is gonna be a fun category. This I'm calling the things you can make tea with, but wait for it. So first, I have Red Roselle, this is a really bright, I thought it was pretty, it's perennial, you can, it says you can make jelly, pie, and tea out of this. Never grown it before, but I thought it looked fun, so red roselle. I think it's in the hibiscus family, that's another thing on that. Not sure, but I think. This one is Fever Few, White Stars Fever Few, you've probably heard of that before. Um, it's traditionally, you can make a tea with it to treat headache. It also has these gorgeous flowers that I think will be good for pollinators. And it's also perennial, I believe. Next we have um, Bergamo Monarda. I really have no idea what this is. I just thought it was pretty. It's perennial and it says you can make tea with it. I, I don't know what the tea does for you, but anyway, that's that one. Now, this one's my favorite. <laughs> this is Rue. Rue is an herb. It's also sometimes called herb o grace. And I want to read you what's on the front here, okay? So it says, warning, not to be taken internally. Rue is believed to induce miscarriage in pregnant women and is known to cause dermatitis in sensitive individuals. Please exercise caution and follow advice only from qualified healthcare professionals. So this is a great one right here. Now let me tell you why I bought this. I love the Hunger Games, and you know Katniss Everdeen's sister in the Hunger Games is named Rue, and I never knew that she was named after an actual flower. I should have realized that because of the other names, but anyway. I didn't know she was named after an actual plant until I saw this, and then after I realized I had to have it. So I bought it, and here it is, and now it's like apparently partially poisonous or something, so I'm not going to eat it, I'm just going to look at it and remember this funny thing <laughs> anyway but uh it's perennial so i'll have it forever and uh apparently rue is mentioned in the new testament in the bible which is also kind of cool but here's my weird possibly toxic kind of cool story seed so that is the things you can make into tea category last but not least this is my savory herbs category 
First, we have Chinese pink celery. This is just celery, except it's pink, but just kind of cool. So uh, that's why I got it. Next, we have Indian coriander. You've probably heard of coriander before. I think it's a reasonably well-known spice. It's from India. I just thought it would be cool to grow my own. Next, we have marjoram, another savory herb that you use in cooking. You probably have heard of it before. Never grown it, so I thought I would. Last, uh, no, not last, but next, fennel. Um, this is something you have probably heard before, too. You can buy it in the store. I thought it would be cool to, crown, to grow my own. Used in Italian dishes a lot. Last, we have mugwort, which I thought just had a cool name. This is perennial, which is another reason why I bought it. It's supposed to be medicinal. I have no idea what for, but I better read up on that before I try and medicate anyone. So anyway, that is my savory and I guess medicinal herb category. And last but not least, the bill. <laughs> Please don't tell my husband, he'll kill me. Except he's filming this video right now. So anyway, um, I love seeds. This is going to be super fun. Continue to watch because I'm going to actually be growing all these and I'll keep, um, I'll keep video updates on how they're going and what it looks like when they start and how to care for them and things that I learn about all these different plants. So keep watching throughout the growing season to find out about all these. And then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. We love to um, answer your questions and see your comments and see what you're doing in your own garden. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.